The Awakened King DLC has so many little secrets woven into the dungeons and the open world of the Forlorn Coast that you may have just missed something. I'm going to show you how to complete a few of the secrets in Remnant 2's latest DLC so that you guys can score some sweet loot. I've done secrets videos like this specifically in the dungeons of Nerud and Lawsom. Those are also on my channel, so if you want even more Remnant 2 secrets, make sure to check those out. First up, we are headed over to the Ethereal Manor event. If you've been in this manor, then you definitely know what I'm talking about. If you've tried to get Anguish, then you definitely know what I'm talking about. But this is actually what's known as an injectable in Remnant 2, where it can be really in any burning dungeon in Lawsom. So we can show up in Cotton's Kiln, Butcher's Quarter, Sunken Haunt is our new one for the DLC. But in order to complete this injectable, you want to run upstairs in this room and you're gonna first find the guy sitting at the chair it's gonna look like you can talk to him but you can't but you want to go up to him and get grabbed once you get grabbed you're gonna be placed back at the beginning but now you're in this kind of dream state so when you're in this dream state you want to look in the windows of the doors so there's a few different doors upstairs and downstairs and you're gonna be able to see if there's a guy sitting in there or in one of the doors you're gonna notice a quest item. Now, if you have the Explorer perk, you're gonna be able to see that right away if it's off cooldown. Also, if you wanna get this chest, you're gonna want to open this door downstairs here, come to the basement and open the chest. Keep in mind, if there's a guy sitting in the chair, you wanna hug the corner as much as you can to avoid getting grabbed. But the whole mechanic of this manor is that if you get grabbed, you start over. And if you grab the quest item, the talisman, it's also going to put you at the beginning again. So your goal is to find that talisman every time. So once you've gotten that chest, you may have to kind of reset. But after you've gotten that chest, now you're going to go through and look in the windows of the doors and find that quest item every single time. So you don't want to go in any of the doors with guys in them. You just want to find that quest item. Also, another thing that is important to note here, once you open one door, the other doors will be locked. So you can't just go in and open each door. You really have to use the window at the top to see where the item is. So make sure if you're playing co-op with somebody else that they're not just willy-nilly opening the doors. So once you locate where the quest item is, go ahead and open that door, grab the quest item. It's going to put you back at the beginning and you're going to notice that this bloody talisman quest item is getting bloodier and bloodier and bloodier every time you pick it up. Just keep picking it up until you pick up your last one. You'll hear some music and it's going to drop the death soaked idol. The Death Soaked Idol is an amulet that increases all damage by 5% for each entity within 20 meters suffering from a unique negative status effect, and it goes up to a max of 5 stacks. This includes you and also includes your summons, so if you're using that bleed ring that we talked about in another video, you can actually bleed yourself and it also bleeds your summons as well. So that's an automatic 15% because that would be three entities bleeding and then if you're doing status effects to enemies as well, then that's going to put you at at least 20% on a boss. All right, the second secret here is out in the open world anywhere on the forlorn coast. We found it in this little section here, but I wouldn't be surprised if you can just kill any pig in any area, but I would try this specific location. You can kind of see the structure on the map, but you're gonna to want to kill all the pigs there. One of the pigs is gonna drop a purple. It is the digested hog lure. It's as simple as that, just killing a pig and getting it to drop. The Digested Hoglore says reloading increases mod damage by 10%. On to our third secret. This is actually the other injectable from the DLC. This is the Vase Mirror Room. This tends to crash people's games because of all the destroyed items in one room. Do not use Miasma in this room, by the way. But what you're going to want to do to complete this room is to find the illuminated vase in the Mirror Realm. So you're going to want to look down on the floor. There's a few candles that'll be lit up but only one that's going to be next to a vase once you see that vase you're going to go into the normal realm to the same spot and shoot it as if it were there you'll hear it get destroyed and it's going to drop a ring for you this is the shade stone which says increases skill damage by 12 percent 
Now, if you are on a virtual list using Miasma, which does go through walls, and if you have the AOE size trait maxed out, it's a huge AOE. It's very likely that you have already smashed every single vase in that room, so just look around for the purple drop on the floor. All right, next up, we are going to be talking about the bells in the Forlorn Coast. There are three different bell locations, and I'm gonna show you guys each one of them here. You wanna ring them and then clear out all the enemies that spawn due to the bell. So the first one is gonna be here after you re-enter the Forlorn Coast for the second time after you go through the castle dungeon. This one should be hard to miss, but once you find it, make sure you hit it and kill the enemies that spawn. The second bell is actually at a dead end. You're gonna be coming up here before you go into the castle. So just keep an eye out for this location on the map. And then the last bell is over here on the side before you go into the area to see Nimue. It's actually right by a small checkpoint. Hopefully this gives you a nice point of reference. It's right by the shortcut door as well. And then once you clear out all the enemies, you're actually gonna see an objective success. And when we did this, it was like the first day of the DLC and it was bugged, but you're gonna get the dark packed trait from shooting all the bells. The dark pack trait is going to reduce your gray health regen rate by 9% all the way up to 90%. So this is going to be good if you are running a gray health build where you want to have gray health because this is going to lower the regen of that gray health. All right, on to the next one. We're going back to the Chamber of the Faithless, otherwise known as the Council Chamber that we know of it in the base game, but this is the location where you go to talk to the king. However, before you go and talk to the king, you're gonna notice that the three council members are kind of dead near their chairs or on their chairs in this area at the front. What you wanna do is shoot each of their dead bodies and you're gonna get a purple drop from one of them. This is so random and wasn't really hinted at at all so i'm surprised that this is even a thing but it in fact is and you may have gotten this on a first playthrough if you had any trigger happy friends but you're going to get the amulet cost of betrayal and this says reduces max relic charges to one increases all damage by 20 percent when where has one relic charge increases incoming damage by 20 percent when where has no relic charges and after 30 seconds regain one relic charge so this is something where you want to keep yourself at one relic charge but i feel like the downside of this the incoming damage by 20 percent is just way too much when we have other amulets where you can get 15 to 30 percent damage for basically nothing so hopefully this amulet gets buffed in the future because i don't really see a place for it right now the last secret for the Awakened King DLC that we're gonna talk about, how to get the meat shake. This is a pretty awesome consumable that I finally got. It was my last item that I needed to complete everything. The meat shake increases your damage reduction by 8% and it lasts two hours and stays in effect after death. This is an amazing, amazing concoction. Alchemist is looking better and better with the concoction build. And once you get this once, it's going to be at mud tooth, so you don't have to worry about acquiring it every time you want one. So here's how you go about getting this. You need to have a Forlorn Coast adventure. So starting at the Forlorn Coast with the scribe, and then you also need to have the Great Hall. I also have a video on all the things you can do with the scribe that you can go check out down in the description. However, this is gonna be something you'll need to run again in order to take that item back to the ward. So the first step is going to be talking to the scribe. Make sure you talk to the scribe first before you head out to find the Great Hall. The second step is going to be progressing your story and finding that Great Hall dungeon. Luckily mine was the first dungeon I came across. The Great Hall is always going to be a castle dungeon. So if you're starting in the Forlorn Coast, you need to just move along, progress through the story because all the beginning dungeons there are going to be uh, like sewer and burning dungeons. So you need to progress progress enough that you get into the castle and then start looking for the Great Hall Dungeon. Once you find the Great Hall Dungeon, go through it until you pick up the medallion, then go back to the main door, open it, and talk to the guy inside. This is the Feast Master and he is going to give you some dialogue. You just need to basically exhaust all of his dialogue and wait for him to start talking about Laywise the scribe and say, yeah, I know him. And he's going to talk about how he is skinny like a twig and he's going to give you 
an item for him to eat. You're gonna get the Feastmaster's Leftovers. This is a quest item that you can take back to the scribe for a reward, but for this guide, I'm gonna show you guys how to make the meat shake. So what you wanna do is instead of going back to the scribe, go back to Ward 13 and give it to the cook that's there in the middle over by Reggie, and he's gonna give you some new dialogue as well. Give him the leftovers and he's gonna cook you up something nice. Now this part is a little bit annoying because you do have to just wait there and keep spamming voice lines on him. He's gonna go sit down, come back, etc. I logged in a few different times and just spammed dialogue. I've heard it can take anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes of just spamming dialogue to get the meat shake. But once you get this kind of like cutscene looking dialogue, you're gonna get the meat shake, which I said is 8% damage reduction. And once you get that meat shake, you're gonna be able to go over to Mudtooth and purchase it from him. It'll be one of your concoctions there so you don't have to worry about doing that whole process over again. All right guys, that is it for all the little secrets that are in the DLC that you may have missed. Let me know if you guys wanna see anything else from the Remnant 2 DLC. I have quite a few videos on the topic. So if you're a completionist, definitely check them out down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.